I don't know about you guys, but I work pretty hard. Yeah. And I work outside mm. and it's really hot. You're I old. go home every day sore as hell, mm -hmm. tired. All I want to do is relax. You know what I do? What do you do? I go to my beautiful, fresh bag of blood orange gummies from Value Sesh. Oh. I've been ripping one of those at least one a day for the last couple weeks. Yeah. And the relaxation and that pressure off all my joints and my body, incredible. Oh, my God. It's the perfect way to wind down every day. If you're like me, Monday through Friday, you bust an ass, you want to come home and relax. Little relaxation sensation. Mm -hmm. oh, I like it. Can't say enough good things about Value Sesh. Love them. Go check them out. Use code SCAREDY, S-C-A-R-E-D-Y. Get yourself some money off. Sorry. Go. I was saying welcome. Oh, welcome. Bienvenidos. Welcome back, Kelsey. <gasps> Thank you. Kelsey. Kelsey. She's back. I'm here. Wearing a lovely Value Sesh shirt. Oh, we love Value Sesh. Oh, my God. Hey, where did you just go? I went to San Diego. San Diego. What'd you do in San Diego, if you don't mind me? Um, I Asking. had family from Washington meet some of my family from Arizona. Sick. Did we you met. go to the beach? We sure did. Oh, which one? Uh, we were staying right on Mission Beach. Nice. I love the beach. We it's were my favorite place. Literally, like you could see the beach from our place. Love it. Yeah. It was incredible. It was awesome. Oh. Uh -huh. But I have a crazy story. But first, welcome to Scaredy Cast, brought to you by Evil Izzy's Haunted Emporium. Can you believe it? Halloween's like less than two like months away. Like 50 days or something. Yeah. 49 yes. days away. 49 oh, days Mama. away. And so for anyone that is a last minute shopper, this is your way to not be a last minute shopper. Go check out Evil Izzy's. You're going to be inspired. You're going <laughs> to want to get a bunch of stuff. Um, even things, even if you don't celebrate boom, Halloween. Tsh, boom, boom, tsh, boom, tsh, boom, boom, tsh. Am I rapping? Yep. Oh, boom, shit. About Evil Izzy's. Boom, tsh, boom, All right. Boom, tsh, uh. boom, tsh, boom, boom, tsh. Evil Izzy's boom, got boom, all the stock. Boom, oh, boom, I almost boom, just run that with a bad word. Boom, boom. I shouldn't do that. Evil Izzy's Emporium. Get a costume for her or whom. <laughs> <laughs> for her or them. <laughs> hey, what'd you say in the car? Like, that ain't that or something? That ain't that. Or like that. That ain't. That ain't I said ain't. that. That. I don't remember. You said that, that or something. I did. I didn't know that, 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 that. that. It ain't. He said, it ain't that, that. <laughs> It ain't that. Oh, it, it ain't that. that. I see, because it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, okay, but uh, going back <clears> to San Diego, <throat> it was amazing. It was so much fun. But guess what happened the first night? Oh my God, jellyfish! Let's hear it. Sting. So, usually, what happens is that my aunt meets my cousins there, and like they have like a little like you know mini like thing that they do on their own, like you know go to the beach, blah blah. This year. Me and my little sister came, and then also they brought from Washington, they brought like their, like her grandchildren, I guess. Like one is 17, one's 21. The first night, so us 21 year olds, not all of us. You're 21? But like, yeah, 21? Yeah, I'm 21. Whoa. Mm -hmm. I'm aging terribly. Um, we went out and like, you know, had a good time. We come back and <laughs> one of my little cousins like brought back this guy, like this English guy, and we were just going to grab some drinks and go out like on the beach. And then so one of my cousins wakes up. It's like, who the fuck is this guy? A little log. It's all crazy. And so like, drunk? whatever, it's fine. No, because she's she was oh. just being crazy. She okay. was being. So that all starts all the thing, like this whole thing. And then we're like, whatever, we're just going to go outside. And then next thing we know, we see my aunt, the cousin that woke up and got mad. Mm -hmm. And then our 21-year-old nephew, who is the brother of the 17-year-old. And they come out and like, we're just chilling on the beach. We're like, oh God, here they come. They're going to yell at us again. What the hell? Like, whatever. <laughs> this is our vacation. Like, we weren't even being loud. Emily's not in her room. She's missing and her phone is off. Who's Emily? The 17 year old. Oh. It's 3 30 in the morning. Way past curfew. 3 30 in the morning. They didn't even know You're that she was out. State. They didn't even know that she was out. You're out on the beach at 3 30 in the morning? Well, we were, yeah. Because oh. we just. You can do we that? Just, well, I don't oh. think you're supposed to. I was going to say, I don't think you're But we were like, oh my God, what the fuck? And uh, so it's like, 
She's missing. It's missing. So like a couple hours go by, like cops come, like all this shit. And then finally she rolls up and we're like, where the fuck were you? Apparently she met like some guy that owns a shop that she bought like these bootylicious shorts from. And that's who she was hanging out I with. I hate all of this. I was so mad. Like You called the cops to... To yes, rescue because her. She, yeah, her phone was off and all this shit. Like oh, that was the fir- that was the first night of our trip, and then I was like, she's probably not even gonna care. Like whatever. Like everyone was like really crazy. Like whatever. And then it turns out that I guess she does this at home all the fucking time because she's oh. always like, oh, my dad gets mad when yeah, like I like leave in the middle of the night and I don't tell. <laughs> Yeah, because you're 17 and, I was like, and it's illegal. I was so mad at my <laughs> aunt to be like, oh. you probably know that she does this all the time. Like, Dang. why did we do this whole thing? So it was like crazy. I was Ooh. like, but everything was fine the rest Good. of the time. until And then the last night, we get a text at 6.30 in the morning, going on an adventure. I'll be fine. Or like, I'll be back or whatever. Oh, my God. So mm. she didn't even. She she learned stressful. nothing. She, stressful. Yeah. Because, wow. I'm not going to say I know. I was like, I'm not your mom, but I would beat your ass. Oh, dude. I mean. Well, I mean, she's just got to be, she's not invincible. And that's. Yeah. She's got to, she's got to learn. And I hate. With her phone turned off. I hate to think of what's going to happen for her to learn. But I literally thought I was like, we're going to be on an episode of Dateline. I'm like, what if we don't find her? And then like all of a sudden Tuesday. Unsolved mysteries. Yeah. I was like, what happens if like Tuesday rolls around? And she's still not here. Are they just going to fly up to Washington? We just drive maybe, to Arizona. Like maybe you'll see her on a different TV show, singled my, out. My strange addiction because she's addicted to dating douchebags. Damn. Maybe I don't know. But yeah, so that's how it started. But other than that, it was really fun. Well, that sounds great. <laughs> what about you, Tony? How was your last uh, week? It's okay. Yeah, me too. Uh, you know what happened though? <clears throat> what tore something in my shoulder. I like oh. how you had your hands up above your head, like fixing your thing. And you're yeah. like, I tore my shoulder, and it like <laughs> no, it well, I can't do. Well, a, like you can't like. Oh yeah, like after. Oh no, I'm like, yeah, it hurts. It's oh. and also my thumb tingles once in a while, and it's really sore. It's probably not good. No, I have things like that all over my body. Yeah, like I feel like this is every not- once in a while my heels will just <laughs> start hurting. Uh oh, and then it goes away. That's probably huh. not good. No, I, none of it's I good think at all. Good. No, but I don't, good, hmm. man. I don't have insurance, so we're just gonna ride this out and see Yo, what happens. Same, yeehaw, America. We'll see what happens. Hell America, yeah, dude. Wish me luck, guys. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Good luck to you, Tony. Good, good luck. luck. Have fun. To you. Oh boy, Kelsey, I need you to do me a favor. Yeah, I want a creep of the week. Mm-hmm. Are we going to be able to say this with TikTok <sighs> happening? What are you talking about? Yeah. Right. Oh, good. How? Yeah. <laughs> Who cares? So, we have a creep of all creeps. Oh boy, do we? Because it it like expands multiple no, multiple genres. It goes into automobiles. It goes into vegetables. Mm-hmm. It goes into their school right across Has the that way. Autophilia, whatever it's called. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. automobilia. <laughs> what is it? Yeah, autophilia. Something like that. It paid out of my bills, it paid out of my bills, it paid out of my bills. I just, that's all I was thinking in my head. So Sorry. this happened in D.C. <clears> where <throat> uh, this family got a notification that someone was in their driveway. Basically what it's like is they're kind of like in this alley um, and they have fencing, but there was this hole in the fence that this guy crawled through. It looked like he had a lunchbox with him. Mm. And this is all caught on like their security footage camera. He goes to what you can see is the back of the car, but you see him walk around to the front of the car, Mm -hmm. pull out what you later find out to be is a cucumber. (laughs) He wedges it into the grill (laughs) of the car. Yes, he does. You see him turn around, lick his fingers a couple times, go like this, (laughs) go like this, rubs in between his cheeks, pulls down his pants. And then does just what he's gonna do. Throws it back. He yeah, he's just bouncing that into thing into that cucumber. Into that cucumber. Or well onto that cucumber. Yeah. I guess. Oh yeah, the cucumber the into cucumbers into grill. him. Yeah. The cucumbers into him. Oh, then God. I don't know. I don't know how long. It doesn't say exactly how long he was doing this, but then you see him walk back out. He places his lunchbox down. The he, cucumber he, was still in there. It was still in his butt. Oh. And then so that's how you find out what it was. Cause then he, he like takes it out and then he puts it 
He puts it's, it back into the lunchbox. Yeah, it's like and the sword and the out. stone. Yeah. It's like the cucumber and the it's bum. Th- it's Thor's hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Only he that is worthy can pull the cucumber from his can, butt. From the booty. Can, yeah. Can thou raise the cucumber from the yes. butt? Oh, my God. So, and then to make matters worse. It gets worse. worse. <laughs> this house, legitimately, it's not close by. It is across the street from Dunbar High School in D.C. So, it is uh, right there. And so they went to the news. You guys have to go look up this news clip because the way <laughs> that like everyone is describing what is happening from the anchors to the reporter on the scene to the woman owning the home. <laughs> the one who caught him <laughs> on her ring yes. camera. She has the entire thing in like HD. <laughs> yes. It's perfect. And the, the worst <laughs> part is when she says she was watching him do it. He sees the camera, and then he just stares. He's making eye while contact. he's doing it. He well, continues. No, that's, that's while he takes out the that he is looking at it while he's taking out the cucumber. Oh, she said he didn't when stop. He I thought, and that's why the eye contact is what. No, made because her. his head, like his body, was faced away from the <laughs> oh camera when he was doing it. God. So it's like when he was walking back and then taking the cucumber <laughs> out. Um, but yeah, she was like, the eye contact was the worst, most disturbing <laughs> part. And then, like, the other lady that they interviewed, like, you could tell that she just was trying not to, like, she's <laughs> trying to take it seriously because she was a representative of the school. But, yeah, this guy's still out there. And apparently, in if you're in D.C., Washington, D.C., uh, this uh, act could get you up to $300 in a fine and or 90 days in jail. How do you think he did it? Do you think he had the cucumber and he was planning on going home? And he couldn't wait. Yeah, and he just couldn't wait. So he's like, what <laughs> can I do? <laughs> Why couldn't he just, just use his hand? Why do you have to stick it in the grill of a car? Literally. Because like, I was thinking it was like, yeah, like you're saying, like bouncing back on it. And that's why. But then when he walked around and still had it in Because it's butt, like, you know, whenever you like, if, you have, if something's happening to you, but you have both hands free, it's like. You something you know like I no. Don't know. What do you mean? Maybe because like he, he doesn't have that much like thigh strength, and so he had to like yeah, you know, like really like use he his needs upper both body his hands to brace himself <laughs> to really get I in just, there. I am on there. I just don't. I just uh, don't want to. I don't know. Uh, do you think he sounds like <laughs> tortoises when they fucking? No, oh, God. Uh, <laughs> I hate that. I really hate that you Please do that. Don't I hate that ten else. million times more than this actual story. Uh, uh, <laughs> I just pictured you in front of the truck. <laughs> okay, we're done. We're done with that. Uh. Kelsey, please start a story. Do something. I, I don't have, I'm do looking, anything. I'm looking into the security <laughs> camera on the garage. Lovingly. Right, but I'm the, <laughs> I'm the unhinged one. Sorry. Good God. It's the Celsius. I told you. You can't handle this. What are you doing? You can't handle the oh Celsius. My Anyways. Oh, God. Um, well, you know, fucking props, man. Like, um, To answer your question, I don't know why he would do something like that. In that, maybe he was trying to make a new flavor of pickle. <laughs> Ew. Oh, he's gonna have to leave it in there a lot longer. Ew. Moving on. He also probably obviously has like some voyeurism. Yeah. Some mental health problems. Which, hey, look, we're not here <laughs> so, to kink shame. Like, I am. That, there's if you did that to ro- my car. <laughs> Well, I don't think the kink was the car. That I'll give you. I, there's, I think it's the whole packet, like everything all together is look, like something like this guy needs. Everybody's obviously needs put help. something up there, you know. This guy just happened to do it on uh, ring camera on. You think whenever he pulled up, made like a like because the cucumber is kind of slick, dude. Like went like, I hate like all a, of this. <laughs> I am never like, coming like back here. Like a balloon, or whenever you like wipe a window down or something. <laughs> Zeke, I will pay you to lock the doors and never let us in this building again. He's like already ahead of you. He's like, oh, the cops are on their way. He's like, yeah, so I'm moving studios, guys. Oh, my God. We're not sure yet. Jesus, take this away. Probably won't ever know the new address. (laughs) Jesus. All right. Let's talk about movies because then Tony will. Oh, we're already going talk. to movies? Yeah, because I literally want you to talk about anything else but poop <laughs> I thought and we butts had actual and stories to talk about. You do. You should. I thought we had ghosts and boogeymans. Me and too. Where are monsters, they? Monsters, ghosts, boogeymans, aliens, big feats, cryptids, and creatures. 
It's spooky times over here on Scaredy Cast. <laughs> and while Kelsey looks up a story, I got to let everybody know that October 4th through the 6th, Atlanta Days of the Dead, we're coming for you. Y'all want to hear a little cryptid story? Yeah. This is one I've been saving because I wanted Kelsey to be here because it's, right, it's a pretty crazy it. story. And cryptid I, time. Hey, Mangy Bones, hit that cryptid music for us. Thanks. Mange. Can I call him Mange? I don't know. I don't know about that either. Listen to this. We were talking about snakes earlier uh, on Monday morning, I believe, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, which... The odds of what happened in this Monday morning happening is just so slim to none. It's, it's really insane. It's a, it's a really crazy story. But anyways, yeah, it's, it uh, mentions a snake, and um, this is actually quite fitting. You guys ready for this? Yeah. Is this a cryptid snake? This is a cryptid something. Snake people. Snake okay. People? Like reptilian people. Yeah. And I'm not talking about the government. Not lizard like, people. Lizard people. Right. I'm not talking about like the, oh, the government reptilians that oh. can shape shift and no, 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 no. You're talking about reptile. I'm talking from about. Mortal Kombat. Mm, kind of. I'm talking about the snake people in Brazil. They live in the Amazon. What? Yeah. What part of them is snake? I'm going to read the entire story. Okay, let's go. There's a man. There's a man. Travel with his grandfather. Grandfather. His grandfather has all these journals. Journals. Of tons of different adventures from everywhere. Kind of yeah. like uh, Theodore Roosevelt used to do. Mm -hmm. All of his hunting trips, all these crazy stories, right? So this grandpa, he does this. He's a massive hunter, fisherman, outdoorsman. He, he actually rode with Teddy Roosevelt uh, and was like friends with the guy. Mm. So <clears throat> he goes to Brazil. Uh, he's looking for this legendary spot where, uh, do you guys know what arapaima are? Nope. Arapaima are massive fish. Like the, the ones where you see like four people holding them out of the, like the biggest arapaima. River monsters. Yeah, probably exactly. Episode, arapaima are on multiple <laughs> episodes of uh, River Monsters. So apparently there's like this perfect honey hole where these arapaima are insane. They could feed a village, right? So this guy's like, I got to go check this place out. So <clears throat> he's being led by a native guide from Brazil on this little, like, little, I guess it's not a dinghy, but like a little boat, little thunk, uh -huh. thunk, 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 motor, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, so he keeps pushing farther and farther. He's telling the guide, this is where it is. This is where it is. Well, eventually the guide uh, gets to a certain point. He turns around and he's like, no, 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 no. We don't go any farther. And he's like, well, that's, I'm not at the, the spot yet. It's further on. He's like, no. We don't, we don't do that. Like in his broken English, he's like, no, dude. And he's so like, fuck you. Yeah, I'm out. I'm out. Exactly. So then um, there's they uh, like they where they stop and he's arguing with this guy. Uh, he sees the guide points out their skulls hanging from the trees. Mm -mm. Howler monkey skulls, not humans, we think. But like, you know, howler monkeys are still. Pretty big. Yeah, pretty good size. Mm -hmm. So at least it looks like a bunch of kids' skulls, which would mean even more creepy. So the guide points those out, and the guy's like, oh, oh, I see all the bones now. I see all the skulls. Uh, so the guide's like, absolutely not. Um, he keeps asking why. What is it? What is it? What's blah, 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 blah. And, and the guy just says snake people. That's all he says. It's just snake people. So he's like, I don't, okay, whatever. Like snakes that eat people? Uh, well, right. That your guess would be as good as mine. This guy's like snake people, snake people. And he's just like, what? Like, no. So, <clears throat> uh, so then the guy's like, fine. If we can't leave or if, if you want to leave, he's like, can we at least just camp here for the night? Can we at least just stay right here? And then I think the guy was try probably trying to plan to maybe sneak out and do his own little excursion because he's an idiot, but they wake up to a scream in the middle of the night. What kind of scream? Um, a howl? No, no, sorry. A scream and then multiple howls. So like one probably like pretty shrill high scream and then tons of Can howling. Can you give an example? Um, well, I didn't hear it. So it would just be a guess. What would you think it sounded like? You know what? I'm going to let you because you are running on a pair. <sighs> I just want Brian to scream for me. Dude, you're, hmm. Can I get that? Can I quote you on that? I, I said it. Feed me a couple drinks and just see, 
And then, oh, well, that's very Scooby Doo, but sure. <laughs> I'll say howls more like. <laughs> think like what? think think of a reptilian lizard person. A reptilian and, and, and a howl, howl. But, howling. But it's probably the howler monkeys. Howling. I don't know, maybe. Right. So the the other thing, the guy's like, well, the main guy's like, well, screw this. Let's let a fire. We can't see shit out here. What the hell? And the guy's like, no, that's what that they'll see us. They'll spot us immediately. Basically, like turning a flashlight on in a giant empty dark room, you're gonna be found. So the guy's like, no, no fire, no fire. And he's like, well, we can't see shit. And we're hearing all these. The forest is coming alive, man. Things are screaming. Things are going. Oh my god. Right. <clears throat> the guide. Fuck this. Runs into the forest. Runs away. Literally leaves the dude in the dark. Just says, fuck this. So Smart. They so they did end up getting out of the boat and then they, going they, into the forest? They parked. They basically just like stopped for the night. They like parked on the land because the guy was like, well, look, we're if you're scared of whatever, he's like in the boat. We're even more Right defenseless. by the bones is where they stopped? I guess. Okay, that's dumb. Oh, I don't know. Probably. Jeez, man. God. Kelsey, at least wait till the end of ruin the story. Come on. Come on. It's fine. Jeez. I'm Kay. clarifying. Here we go. The guide the takes guide off. Takes off. The other dude looks at him like, oh, well, I'm not staying here. Goes and follows him. Smart. Right. So he's going with the guide. All of a sudden, boom, back of the head, blacked out. Takes a freaking Ooh. hit. The main guy out. Oh, main guy's he out. He said he's running. He's running. Bam. Just like face in the mud, passes out. Right. Wakes up, hanging upside down. Stop. Oh, my God. Fuck that. In a clearing. So he's hanging upside down, but it's all open. And he's just going, oh, my God, just hanging there. I don't know if he's like naked or anything like that. Doesn't. I don't know if it says, but so he's just hanging there. Kelsey likes that. So 30 <laughs> feet away, okay, the yeah. guide has his legs severed and cauterized. This poor Wait, the, guide. The, the, the guide, man. Main man's hanging upside down. He's going, where the hell, what happened? He looks over 30 feet away. The guide's laying against a wall with his legs cut off oh and God. cauterized. This poor guy didn't even want to be there. Correct. So then um, really he's mad. just sitting there dying, but slowly. God. And then three creatures... These little reptilian creatures walk up to the guide and start licking the burnt stumps of his legs. Oh, my God. That just, like, made my spine. Yeah. They're, like, cooking this man alive and eating him. And they're, the dude hanging upside down is just probably next. So then he says, this is where I got the description of them. Because as he's hanging upside down watching them eat the guide, he this is what he says. <clears throat> Where their ears should have been was some sort of bronze plated scale, and uh, they were no more than three feet tall and bipedal. Their skin was dull greenish brown, and they appeared to be made up of scales. So we have a dull brown green, no more than three foot high. I kind of imagine a kobold. If anybody's played D&D, it's like a lizard person. It's just like that. Kind of like Mushu from uh, uh, Dragon? from uh, 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 Mulan. Yeah. But like a little bit taller. So like a lizard three foot thing, uh, except it has this blonde, uh, bronze plated scale where their ears should be almost like armor or something. Um, their legs were shaped like kangaroos. So they had backwards, like, like a dog, a dog leg. Um, and they ended with large three toed feet. They had long, thick tails that they dragged behind them. Their heads were reptilian. And instead of noses, they had slits like snakes do Dude. or, 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 uh, this is terrifying. lizards through which their long forked tongues darted in and out. Um, <clears throat> So in the morning light, they were surrounded in this canopy of trees, and the entire sky was moving with these creatures. But then he realized the ones up in the canopy were twice as big. So we're talking the six-foot massive reptilian people things are all up in the, in the canopy, way up high in the trees. And all the little ones are 
well, I don't know, on the ground or doing their bidding or whatever. There was some sort of vocal command, like a grunt or a scream, and then all of them moved out into the jungle at the same time. Um, and then uh, from there, he ends up actually getting rescued, believe it or not. But And then the guide died or he was okay The guide too? was definitely dead. Definitely did. Yeah. He did not make it. He's the one that didn't even want to be there in the first place. Correct. But yeah, he hang up. Th- he was uh, hung up there for a while. Um, and then whatever this large thing gave him a vocal command. And then all of them left long enough for someone to come and cut him down. Damn. And I don't remember exactly how, uh, like, I don't know if it was GPS or his cell phone, whatever. But he got rescued. It's so crazy that the rainforest has been destroyed so much and so like such a significant portion of it that things like this are not killing the loggers and the ranchers and I mean, stuff that are destroying. Be. Hopefully they are. Well, I'd be on their side. <laughs> right. Freedom fighters. So yeah. Wouldn't that be crazy if that was real? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. We can't, who's to say? Can't say it's not real. The Amazon is so unbelievably big too and, and it like, houses so much and like unexplored oh yeah and there's so much ecosystem there from the the wild uh life in the in the water to in the trees the jungle like all of it it's crazy god knows what kind of messed up shit is out there i wonder what like so they like threw something at the back of his head to like knock him out or it was like a maybe they like were he, running like, poisoned and him or like maybe they just hit him with a club who knows yeah dang, but fast. like dude gross because here's the other thing there's tribes of people that are like very, very, very kill on sight. Well, like, yeah, I mean, they've never been like had interaction with anyone outside of their tribe, right? So Which, imagine you know what, what else is what else is is possible out there. Like there's and there's still so much unexplored land. Like it's it's wild. It's wild. That but yeah, be, wasn't that terrifying. wasn't that crazy? Could you yeah. imagine what just you watching say? someone getting their little leg stumps getting? No. Do they have? Do they have names? Like, did they? Did he like say that there's like a name for these things? No, no. Damn. While we record right now, we are streaming live on TikTok. Mm-hmm. Uh, people are hanging out, watching us record. Cool. Molly's in the chat. Oh, we love Molly. She says, "Bro, I'm standing outside in the boonies, getting scared <laughs> AF." <laughs> Molly, watch out for them snake people. Watch out for the little cobalt. I know it's man. scary. That is actually really scary. Would you rather run into something <clears throat> like that? <clears throat> Or what's like another like what's a similar cryptid to some like oh, pfft, to the reptilian people? Yeah. Oh like shit! A, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, goblin. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Would you rather run into like these snake dragon people Ugh. or like a goblin? I don't know. Equally bad. Yeah. Honestly, I don't know. You're fucked either way. Yeah, it's like flip a coin. <laughs> You're like, I... Pick your poison, flip a coin. Which one's gonna kill me faster? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Cut my Probably head goblins. off or stab me in the I'm heart. I'm taking one with me. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Like if I'm going, at least one. One's coming thing. down with me. I don't. I don't even really want to be like touching <laughs> snakes or reptiles. Like I can. I've pet snakes and lizards, and like instead? that's cool. Like what? You touch a goblin instead? No, but I'm saying like, I I don't even like touching them for fun. If I had an army of them trying to attack me, I'd just be like, Aah. there's no way. Like imagine just like a wave of roaches that would are harmless, but imagine a wave of ro- of roaches mm-hmm. moving towards you. You're gonna instinctively just be like, ew, no. Like, you're not just going to stand there and just be like, cool. Okay, so how about this? So how about, like, three of those, like, the little, like, the The three feet ones? Like, three of the little cobalt guys or, like, one giant, like, 50-foot-long python that can definitely swallow and eat you alive. Which one? Dude. I think three of those little things. I'm taking those little, I don't know, they got weapons and shit. Yeah. And if they, like, scream and then the six-foot ones come in, they're big bros. No, just the three, just the three. I think I'd go python because I think I don't think pythons move that fast, do they? I don't know. A 60-foot one too, dude. That's so strong. That's a lot of if it, so if it gets so you, muscly. you're done. And it can strike so fast. Ugh, ugh. Gross. I just stay home. <laughs> How about neither? Yeah. I'll just stay home. Okay. Well. Hey, Tony, we'll go to the Amazon. No. Nope. <laughs> no. 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 It's like, hey, Tony, we'll get dropped off in the middle of the ocean. Mm, no. Also no. No. I would Good. take the ocean over. No. I would, take the, Am- I would <laughs> no. take. I would take the Amazon over the ocean. I, I don't uh, know. Man. Tarot Bard. He's in the chat as well. He's going to be at ScaredyCon. Ooh, ScaredyCon. Doing some tarot. 
two. He says goblin 100%. Well, see, here's the thing. When it's an unknown creature, you have no yeah. idea what it can do. Well, they both are pretty unknown. Ah, uh, true. Yeah. True, true, true. At least Goblins we have, could be like magical. That's yeah. what I'm saying. At least we have some sort of reference with these little reptilian guys where it's like, okay, they're physical. They probably use physical weapons and traps and rope. It's not <laughs> like they're just using psychic and powers. I will say the video game Ghosts and Goblins is like one of the hardest video games ever. Ever. It's so hard. Yeah. Seriously. What well, makes it so hard? Like, why is it? You just the, don't get life, really. You no, get hit once and your clothes fall off. You get hit twice, you're dead. And yeah, you your, your all the way back to the beginning. Off. Plus. Oh, it doesn't like have no. markers. Like. And, there, and the, the enemy placement is like, you'll be jumping. And then as you're falling, it'll come off the screen. So you're like, oh shit, you got to like dodge real quick. And like, Dang. it is tricky. It's one of those games where you get like one, you get like 10 feet farther, die. Start over. Get a little bit farther. Ten feet farther. Die. Okay, now I know that that guy's going to pop up there. But it's have to, to have very, to start from the very beginning every time. Every time. There's no way has anyone ever finished that game. Oh, before. yeah. Sure you should watch have. people speed run it. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah, but that's they, people boring. People do that. They do it blindfolded. There's people exactly. that do so these. It's boring. I think that's so stupid. It's incredible watching someone do something she perfectly. Just, that's because she's not good at video games, so she's just jealous. <laughs> yeah, girls, girls so suck. Jealous. Girls suck at games. Uh, just kidding. Well, you guys wish you have ever been around a girl. I That's know. True. Yeah. <laughs> How about that? Can I'm we just talking about movies? Break free from the ordinary and check out a podcast with thought-shattering concepts that will reshape the way you interpret the world. We are the Swerve Podcast, and our mission is very simple. Each episode, we research and discuss topics that swerve off the mainstream path in an attempt to understand everything in the universe one obscure topic at a time. Whether you're into forgotten history, cutting-edge science, strange frontiers of the unknown, or just need a good laugh in an uncensored way, the Swerve Podcast has you covered. Listen to the Swerve Podcast today on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or any other major platforms. I did not like Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice a whole lot. Okay. I was feeling the nostalgia of it. I was mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, the cast is here. Michael Keaton's Beetlejuice. I'm watching Beetlejuice yeah. directed by Tim Burton, scored by Danny Elfman. Which, like, oh my amazing. God. Amazing, yes. And then like the movie starts and then it's like, <sighs> and then things start happening. And I'm like, mm. and then the movie ended and I was like, oh. Really? Yeah. <clears throat> My whole problem is like they were trying to do way too many subplots and stories at the same time that like none of them wound up mattering in any way. Oh, I hate that. The main it's like just like a bunch of fluff all over the place that just yeah, doesn't lead to the anything. The main yeah. like thing you get from the trailer is like Monica Bellucci's character Dolores, Dolores is Beetlejuice's ex-wife and she's back and she's coming after him. She's still fine. She's very fine. So she's gorge. Fine. Even as her character. Yes. Oh, God. Even hotter as Even her character. <laughs> when Good she's Lord. stapling herself together, it is. <gasps> However, if you went and watched that movie and they deleted all of her scenes from that movie, you're watching the same movie. Yep. I agree. Here's what's funny. There I'm was no point to her being in this movie. She did not <laughs> alter the course yeah. of nothing yeah. in this oh. movie. Oh, it wasn't like revenge, like a revenge. Well, thing it is. Or like, well, it but is, like, but it but doesn't. Like, it doesn't affect the actual. Does not I, affect the outcome in any way. Oh, I hate that. Can Why I even spoil do that? it in a way? Yes, Monica Spoilers. Bellucci. Monica Bellucci says maybe like ten words in the whole movie, and most of them is, "Where is Beetlejuice?" She's barely in this movie too. Barely. That's There's most of her. That's four all her scenes that's total. Thirty percent of her lines. Do you think they did it just to say like Monica Bellucci's? In? I don't know, but and then here's. Well, I will say my piece after. Moving on next to the other actor. Now, which one? I can't. I don't. I, I can't really go into too much detail. Oh, I know what you're going to because say. because was a spoiler. I have to no because no. I have to use certain words <clears throat> that places like TikTok and YouTube and all that they don't like these words. Okay. Mm -mm. Um, his name is Jeffrey Jones. Okay. Uh, he's not in Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. He was in Beetlejuice one. He's not in the sequel for <laughs> reasons. If you don't know these reasons, the actual actor. yes. Okay. Yeah. If you don't know these reasons, he's doing bad stuff. Yep. Yes. To Just, a certain demographic, or you, you, you could say that. Or, okay. Sure. Okay. Um, I think like the the slang now on the old internet is PDF files. Oh. So. Um, <laughs> Gross. 
Anyways, oh. so yeah, he hasn't been in anything in a very long time. As right. so he shouldn't. Obvious. If you guys don't know who that is, he was also Ferris Bueller's Day Off, which makes it even weirder. Because oh, is he the principal? He's the principal. Yes. Because that was a bunch of key. Delinquent. He, he looks like a PDF file. Well, well. <laughs> the thing with Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice is obviously you're like, oh, he's not going to be in this movie because cancel. Um, but they decide to make him <clears throat> a part of the movie. Why? Why? Uh, so the movie kind of kicks off with his character dying, and the reason they go back to the old house is because he loved that house, and that's where his funeral is going to be. Makes sense. But then. This is Winona's dad, right? Yes. Okay. In the, in the movie, yeah. Okay. And uh, so in the movie, he's eaten by a shark. So his ghost is in the movie wandering around. So they're still paying him. So the top half of his body's gone. His mm-hmm. head's not there. And oh. It, but he's still talking somehow through yeah. his it's all gurgly because it's just his, like a neck spurt and blood. Yeah. He's like one of those old tobacco commercials where it's like, don't smoke tobacco. Yeah, well, yeah, no, no, no. I mean, me. literally, this is scooped out of his body. He is shoulders and a gushing neck hole. Yeah. And then he's like. <laughs> but the thing <laughs> is, they also like on his tombstone where he's buried, they have his actual picture. Well, it's laser etched. It's not. They, it's him. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that they have that. And then they're showing pictures of him throughout the movie. And it's like, yeah. why hey, even just that's true. Maybe stop distracting me with like because every time you show this man's picture of this movie, I immediately think like, oh, I know why he's not in this movie. Tony, Tony put it the best way. Cause when he I was like, Oh yeah, I saw Beetlejuice. He was obviously like, dude, what'd you think? Because I saw it early. And then after I was like, let me, you know, and he goes, I don't think I like Beetlejuice. And he said that he goes, I was so distracted by them telling me that he's not in this movie that I forgot that he wasn't in this movie because they just keep reminding you, hey, he's not in this movie. It feels like they literally could have just done some throwaway, like just shown like a shot. Well, of like, here's the thing. I feel like they, they had could have s- done nothing because the whole thing with his character it doesn't matter. is the same as Monica Bellucci's character. It doesn't fucking matter at the end of the yes. movie. So she literally could have had a conversation like, so is is uh, is the girl like Winona's daughter? Yes. Okay. So literally she could just be like, oh, so sad that your dad's well, not Well, they here. do, or but that they your make a joke dead. about it because they prolong it and make him like really, really die. And it's like, okay, we get it. And then they don't stop for the rest of the movie. And you're like, why is he in this movie? Oh, why is he even? To do with the this? plot, it revolves around him Dang. because he's dead. And so it's like the there is a plot with him wandering around, and it's kind of um, his wife Catherine O'Hara missing him in a way, kind of. There is a him, plot yeah. with uh, Lydia, Winona Ryder, and this her new boyfriend who wants to get married to her. There's a plot with their whole relationship. Yep. There's a plot with Jen Ortega and Winona Ryder and their relationship. Well, Jen Ortega doesn't like her mom because her real dad died and blames her mom in a way and everything and. And then there's the plot with Beetlejuice and Dolores, and that's all going on. And oh. then there's a plot with Jen Ortega and some new boy she meets yeah. on the street. And it's God. like, dude. You know what this sounds like? Hmm. This sounds like there's like a bunch of writers that like were able to get producers on or are like Nepo babies or something that are like, well, I, well, this is what I think it should be. And then so they're like, fine, we just want to make this movie. Let's just put it all together in oh the movie. Oh, my God. There is so yeah. much. Is there and, any resolution to anything? Oh, yes. but And here's the thing. So- the interesting story is Jenna Ortega's character and this new boy she meets. That's interesting. I don't want to spoil this, what is really going on, but it's like the entire movie could have just been that. Mm. Yeah. And it would have been so much better. Yeah. And and by the time you're vested into that plot line, it's it ends like. immediately. Oh, and yeah. you're like, it, oh, like, okay, guess yeah. we're done with that. Oh. There's like a twist involving him and everything, but then it's just like, oh, we're... What this feels like to me is they had a movie. They had it all, and then went, oh, dude, why'd you have to do this? And then they're like, well, let's just paint over it. And so they're like, okay, we won't have him in the movie, but we'll have a claymation scene of his likeness. We won't have him in the movie, but we'll make a character that... They kept using his likeness so much that he's for sure got paid. He's absolutely... I'm telling you, he's most of the movie kind of revolves around him. Do you remember in Star Wars, The Last Jedi? Do you remember Star Wars whenever he says, like, somehow Palpatine returned? 
Just like, just like he, somehow he just, that emperor came back. He just oh, and yeah, die. and then they just like skip Plot one roll. They just like yeah. yeah. Somehow Palpatine returned. Okay. Uh, that kind of happens in Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, whenever they're like, "What happened to the Maitlands? What happened to Gina Davis and Alec Baldwin's characters from the first movie? The main characters from the first yeah. movie." Yeah, but then instead they literally were just, just thrown away in a line. They're like, "Oh, we found a loophole. They crossed over." Yeah, they're, that's that what they. Was li- it. It's like, like, oh, they they just. They finally found a loophole, and then they crossed over. We found over. a loophole, they crossed over. Because, you know, the whole thing is waiting in the line. They should have done and the opposite. Well, they probably couldn't get them in. Also, the isn't Alec Baldwin in trouble, too? I mean. I don't know, man. I hate much. all this Not stuff. Not as much as the other guy. True. 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 <laughs> so, true. true. Like, how long ago did all that stuff come out? I wonder how long this movie's been in the works, well, and then how long ago the that The movie's been happened. in the works since, like, the first one came out. <sighs> Like they like were twenty years. They wanted to make a sequel called Beetlejuice Goes Hawaiian or something. Where oh like Beetlejuice God. Goes to Hawaii. Like, I will God. say, thank, a, and thank I God that one didn't happen. That. No, yeah, that does sound like a Tony movie. I don't like it, anyways. So yeah. Okay, so how many, um, <laughs> how many weird claymation things would you give it? I would give it two and a half out of five. Dang, mm. and that's heavily too like heavily because of the nostalgia. Because like it was really. Here's the thing. Uh, this is actually, I'm going to play a devil's advocate. I'm going to play the other side of Tony that says, if you're a fan, you got you got what the fans want. It's just fan service. It was a whole movie. I am a fan. Full like, I of love Beetlejuice. The nostalgia. Beetlejuice got an origin. This had to be made for his prequel, basically, to have a origin story for him. That's one thing that's new that gets <laughs> announced or, like, you know, is brought to the table. Otherwise... It's just a nostalgia. I mean, it's so cartoony. There's a lot of practical effects. There's a lot of CGI. But the jokes hit. It's nonstop, like, funny. Like, it's pretty comic, which is, it was less awkward and weird as the first movie. Because the first movie kind of looks like a, sorry, Tim Burton. Less awkward and weird than the first movie? Yeah, because the first movie, to me. That's what Beetlejuice is, though. Exactly. It seems it like. It is so oh. crazily awkward and weirder. Yeah, but it looks like, okay, but it looks like a new, it looks like a modern movie. It's not, it doesn't look like it's directed by Tim Burton to me. This is like, oh no, this was like Eli whatever his face that did the Star Trek movies, did Beetlejuice. There's so much like, <laughs> that's not awkward and weird. All that went away with this new movie. It's very much like scripted and I don't know. It just feels different to me. There's one point in this movie. Where my child, who was 11 years old, looked at me in the theater and said, looked in my eyes. He said, what the hell am I watching? Little Lucas. My child <laughs> in Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice was just like, the fuck am I watching right now? Like, there's just nonsense happening constantly in this movie. It's Beetlejuice, man. So, I don't know what to tell you. If you guys don't know who Lucas is, like, he's like the cutest little, like, most innocent, like... <laughs> Angelic cherub uh, in the world. I don't and know. It, like just to see him yeah. be like, <laughs> I was gonna say, I love Lucas. Him running around so with funny. his little skibbity toilet and his VR on, just screaming oh, around the house. That's what eleven year olds do, man. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so Brian, how many, uh, how many weird claymation things? Have- I, I don't know, man. I'm gonna give it at least a three. I liked it. I thought it was funny. I thought it was modern and nowhere near the Your first one. ratings aren't, the, aren't that far apart. My biggest issue, too, is the I ending. agree with all of his critiques. Mm. That's the thing is I liked the movie. I found it very entertaining. But, like, oh, yeah, I could – Michael Keaton never brings the energy. Like, it's He's sad. He's also a thousand years old. I know. But this mu- – here's the thing. This is the last thing I'm going to say about Beetlejuice. This movie was absolutely just a massive cash grab. It is fan service. It's Jenna Ortega. She's being typecasted. Let's be honest. Like, Yeah, I can't stand that. I know. But I'm just saying this was a cash grab. Absolutely. I don't care what you say. This is not just a passion project. This was filled with stars and all these modern things. It's meant to make money. I hate to say it. But I was entertained. I liked it. It I was mean, funny. Every movie's meant to make money. I hated the ending more than anything. In oh this yeah. Movie. Can yeah. you say how it ended or no? Or the is that ending like a super is so spoiler? just random and rushed. I, and I, I just did not half like assed. Yeah, I didn't like, like that. And then the thing is too is like, okay, in the first movie, Beetlejuice is kind of the bad guy. Yeah. In this one. He does nothing wrong. He helps them. So like, well, he does. He, he yeah. tricks her. He tricks her. When? To sign the thing. He doesn't thing. trick her. Yeah, he does. Jenna Ortega, 
uh, gets into some trouble. Uh, so much so that the only person that can help Lydia save her daughter is Beetlejuice. So she calls Beetlejuice, you know, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. He comes back. He's like, hey, juice is loose. She's like, I need your help. I have something fun. He doesn't trick her. He literally says to her, like, I'll help you get your daughter, but you have to marry me. Here's a contract. Pff, like, does the whole Beetlejuice thing, crazy long contract, whatever. She signs it. She's like, fine. Whatever it takes to get my daughter back. Okay. And Beetlejuice, it literally takes like, there's no hard, there's no effort. For him to do this. Like, he's able to just He's film. literally just able to like. That should have been the whole plot of the Kind of does. It. Like, I'm sure he's like having to like hide and duck around the underworld. Yeah. To dodge his ex-wife. But you like. You forgot a plot line. What? Uh, Lydia's ex-husband who died and, and Jenna Ortega's dad. Remember? Yeah, I said that. Oh, I don't think you did. I did. I, whenever I was saying Jenna Ortega's mad at her mom because her dad died and she blames her and everything. Oh, well, that's a whole other thing. Anyways. It sounds crazy. It's so, crazy. like, Beetlejuice helps her. Spoilers. Beetlejuice helps her. At the end. He does nothing schemy or dirty or wrong. He, like, literally, like, boom, this is solved. Done. And then Lydia's like, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Sending you back. Gone. No, she says home, home, home. Whatever. Sends him gone. And it's like, wait, you just totally fucked over Beetlejuice. He's even like, we had a contract. And she's like, oh, no, no. So are like, they trying to set it up for like the th for a third one of well, like no, him no. getting revenge? They, I will put it this way. The ending like was really bad. The, I don't like the, it the, at all. the end, 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 like credit scene. Was there a credit scene? No. No. But the very last scene is like, oh, come on. And it's uh, let's just put it this way. If they make a third one, it's open question mark, Please but don't. also like don't. Don't do it. Unless it's in Beetlejuice in Hawaii. <laughs> in conclusion to this movie, this is my final like, oh, okay, review kind of a Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. I left that movie theater driving home thinking, you know what? I don't ever want to see another legacy sequel to any movie ever again. That's how I felt like Dumb and Dumber 2 was absolutely awful. Awful. I heard Anchorman like, 2 was pretty bad, too. Anchorman 2 was terrible. Hangover 2 was terrible. I mean, those, those aren't, like, more like legacy. But, yeah, like, a lot of these really nostalgic oh, yeah, films legacy, that yeah. come out, they yeah. just don't do it right. They just they just can't – you can't capture the – and, too, I think by then, like, with things like this, with the first one, there's probably a lot less say from, like, producers and the studios and things like yeah, that. Because, that's the other thing. Because they probably were just like, yeah, go make that movie. It's probably not there's whatever. There's a lot of producers like, okay. on Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Yes. One of them I, was that's weird. Exactly one of them was Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt <laughs> was it, one of the executive producers. I was like, huh. He's like, make the ex-wife come back and be all mad. Oh, my God. It was <laughs> like, his idea. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. Tarot, the bar Tarot Bard in our TikTok chat says he would – Rather, they reboot the cartoon than make a yes. third movie. Yes, and I will say though, the cartoons available on Tubi right now. Too. The movie Tubi. was very cartoony with the practical effects. It was very goofy and off the wall. Mm. It was uh, entertaining. I, yeah. I thought it was funny and weird. Uh, moving on from Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Yeah, I watched another movie. What was it? Oh man, oh bad. I can't tell if that's good or bad. <sighs> yeah, I know. Okay, just just saying. I know. I watched another movie. I did. What was it? It was called The Deliverance. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. Weren't you waiting Tony to shit was, on this movie? <laughs> Tony was texting us and like saying all this stuff about like, whoa, this is so crazy, la, 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 la. And so like, wait, is this about, I won't like spoil it for you. But. Halfway through this movie, I was like, wait a minute. So basically the movie's about this family. Uh, Glenn Close plays a very interesting character in this movie. <laughs> uh, but her kids are being possessed. Oh, by what? A demon. And I'm watching this movie. I'm like, this is seeming a little familiar. Wait a minute. This is based on Demon House. Oh. The house from Indiana that Zach Baggins bought made his documentary Demon House that we will all that it was like the first time we ever did like a ever scaredy did a, cast yeah, team thing, movie like outing. theater thing. Yes. We went and saw Demon House. I was like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> I was so mad at Tony. I'm like, why did you? I'm like, this is terrible. I'm like, this is the corniest shit I've ever seen. Dude. And you're like, he has this whole show. And I'm like, how? Yeah. How? This movie is crazy. I'm Good, sure, bad. like, 
I mean, for me, good. Oh, okay. So for you others, I don't know. it's a Tony movie. I don't. I think this is kind of on all of us. Glenn Close is in a Tony movie. This. No way. Yeah, dude. Glenn Close. <laughs> she got like a strong like Creole accent and stuff, huh? Right. She's like braiding. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a TikTok meme going around right now with her that I won't say because you just got to watch this movie. I how swear many? To God. Okay. How many crawfish? I gave a four out of five. Wow. Crawfish. Okay. Yeah. Cause like, you know, listen, L- Louisiana. I, oh. I really enjoy Creole. movies that like if you're gonna go for it, fucking go for it. Yeah, full don't, sense. Don't lollygag around. And this and this, one. this one went for it. Okay. Really? Is it and deliverance I, like a baby? Like a delivering a I baby? I don't know what the whole deliverance the del- I don't know like, what the pro- deliverance is. Probably like a plan means, like deliver like, me from evil or some shit. Hmm. Yeah, it's like, you know, the house uh turns out is just like a Portal to hell, pretty much. Like, oh, just the worst possible demons are in this. Just like, damn. But like, the real story, I was like really into because it was like I don't I'm I don't know if it was the first ever, but it was the first time for me at least mm-hmm. that I read in the news about a haunting that also involved like police and doctors and stuff going on record saying like. Yeah, I yeah, was like seeing this shit happen too. I love like, that. This is when you have wow. the science back up, the paranormal, yeah. it's like, yeah, these are what we need. They like, were saying like the kids were like walking on the walls and floating and doing like cr- speaking and in these, tongues and doing crazy shit. And, like walking on the walls. The and, doctors and yeah. the, the like they took these kids to the hospital. Like and the nurses were like. Yeah, we saw this happen. Like, like th- that's the thing is you have to be like a doctor or like uh, someone in the air force, and then it's like, oh, you're you're a respectable. Like, oh, this was a just a normal high people up. like us. Yeah, like, mm, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, so it's like, okay, in. fine. Then there's the doctors. There's all your officials, and then it's like they're like, yeah, we don't know what the fuck that was. But it's like, even hmm. even then, though, I feel like sometimes professional people like that are skeptical to say stuff like that because oh, yeah. they don't want to be seen as unprofessional Absolutely. or kooky or. And that's just shitty because that's our society. Yeah. Yeah. But like, yeah, you'll absolutely be like, oh, how is this flowing right now? I, um, I'm i sure there's a, a, a logical a explanation. Um, there's probably, yeah, and it's like, whatever. The man. stairway from the real house is at Zach Baggins Museum in Vegas. Like the whole like staircase? Yeah. Man. I don't weird. think it's like a giant staircase. I think it's like the bottom like part that like the landing thing comes down, yeah. Huh. Because like the, apparently like the portal or whatever, the heavy area for this activities was under the staircase in the basement. Ugh. So they're like, let's just make a bigger hole for this thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dude. Open it up. Well, they bulldozed the house in real life. It's gone. Damn. Took it so down. The portal is just, that's why the, the, that's why the world has been going they to shit. They say there's still weird it's things happening there, man. In the open field. But yeah, dude, the deliverance, uh, wild. We all watched another movie. Front Room. Yeah. With Brandy. Yeah. You want me to do a little quick one of that? I was going to say that for next week. <gasps> okay. But we can. No. Let's save it. Okay. Let's save it. Let's save it. Do you Let's have any it. movies? Uh, I'm going to save mine for next week as well. Huh. Okay. Uh, mm. Good save, Kelsey. Good save, Kelsey. Thanks. <laughs> she only Let's wrap one. this episode up. Send us out of here. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in with us and everyone on TikTok as well. If anyone listening to the podcast would like to keep up with us, you can go to scaredycast.com. We have a lot of live events coming up, not just here in Arizona. It's happening throughout the nation, starting with Days of the Dead in Atlanta, Georgia, the weekend of October 4th. We cannot wait. So if you guys are in that area, make sure you come check us out. But also, too, uh, follow us on TikToks, uh, on social medias, on everything. And if you would like to be a part of helping us have a very successful live tour trip you can go to patreon.com slash scaredy cast become a patron um and we also have a wish list too so if you'd like to help us purchase some equipment so in that way we can help pr- keep providing you guys more awesome content not just right here at xyz media studio then make sure you do that and with that i think we bid you adieu Ooh.